Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today, we're taking a look at a keyboard that I've been waiting for for a little while. Now, some of you may recognize this keyboard right off the bat. This is a Halo 75. It was released a little over a year ago. I want to say roughly about a year and a half ago. It is a unique 75% um, Newfie kind of came out. I mean, they have their Air Series, which is their little profiles, which a lot of people seem to like. Um, I mean, a low profile is a low profile. I am. I have yet to review the V2s. Um, I was not necessarily impressed with the V1s. But when it came to the Halo series, Nufi really uh, took it out of the park with this. This is a combination of aluminum and plastic case. It has an inner aluminum halo of light, hence the name. It is a three-mode keyboard that is top mount, and it came with a few uh, new switches that I believe are just a collaboration between Gateron and Nufi, and Nufi has exclusivity over them. Uh, the baby kangaroos and the baby raccoons. Um, the kangaroos, a lot of people will be familiar with, although I think that maybe the exclusivity ended because... Um, I see other shops selling the baby kangaroos now. They've become quite popular. They're a nice tactile switch, though a bit pricey in my opinion. But this keyboard really did kind of jumpstart a bit the, not really jumpstart the market, but it kind of put a little bit of fire under with some of the manufacturers to be a little bit more creative when it came to how they design their cases. Now, I have been working with uh, Nufi for quite some time. Um, I did ask for a V2 uh, as a review unit. Apparently, I asked too late, so I had to purchase my own, and that's what we'll be reviewing today. But I kind of just wanted to do a quick overview of the original one, uh, the things that made this different. When this Halo came out, it... it it stood out from the rest of the crowd, especially when it came to um, the compact 75% format. Now, they also have the Halo 65 and the Halo 96, which I've reviewed as well. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the V2 and just doing a quick comparison of how it improves over the V1. And I remember when this one came out, I'm like, you guys really have a great keyboard on your hands, though you could make it perfect if you added QMK via. And what did they do? They added it. So, so today we are taking a look at the Halo 75 V2. Um, I'll be taking a look at the 96 soon enough. Um, I got in too late and asking for a review unit, so I had to go ahead and purchase this one myself, but it's fine because I do enjoy their keyboards. Um, as far as their keyboards go, a lot of the issues that I've seen with the Gem 80 um, were corrected through firmware, and the Gem 80 is one of my heavy rotation daily drivers. It's it's just a great TKL. I like the sound, the feel of it, and I like that it combines aluminum and plastic. I think that's a nice touch. It's kind of like the best of both worlds. Today, we are taking a look at the Halo 75 V2, 75% um, QMK via keyboard. So it's the upgraded version. I do believe it still has the Halo on the inside, though we've added that they've, for some reason on the gem, there's also that little badge. It's a little magnetic badge that sits above an array of LEDs um, that just kind of shine behind it. So let's go ahead and tear off the plastic and get into this keyboard. Now, as you can see, I did order the blue one. Um, I have a tendency for blue things and there was actually a couple colors. I mean, I kind of wanted to go with the black, but then I kind of wanted to go with the white. And then I was like, wait a minute, how about that? It was just, so I just went with the blue. It's a little bit more neutral than just saying black or white. And I already got a black 75, I know V1 and a white V1 Halo uh, 65. I think that the addition of the colors is a nice touch. And I got to say, it, the only negative thing about it is having to pick which color you prefer. So we have our Waifu um, stickers that we can put anywhere. And we have what looks like a pretty nice, I don't know if that can actually come off. It looks like it should be able to. 
really nice Newfie logo sticker. We have a Q&A booklet or a FAQ, basically. It's going to talk about the different functionalities, 2.4, Bluetooth, and so on. Then we have a poster slash user card. So on one side, it's kind of like a quick user guide. And on the other side, it is a poster of the Waifu. So we do have some extra keycaps in the box. Um, probably seeing the alt key, so it's probably to replace the... Um, oh, I guess they uh, have something else for the Windows and the Mac keys. But we have the little... Um, I want to call him a little ghost, a little cat ghost. I don't know uh, exactly what he is, but he's on the... Uh, original 75 so we have a few extra keys we have a really nice wire switch and key cap puller branded with Nufi on there um, now we do have some extra switches uh, they are basically samples of the switches you can get now if i'm not mistaken i got mine loaded with the lemon which is a light tactile switch the gem 80 i've got these mint in there which is a linear and these can't recall the name of them at the moment. I have not tried them yet. They just they just feel like a heavier linear. The mint is a lighter linear. I think it's 37 grams. And this one's probably closer to 45, 50. Just a heavier linear. But in this one today, I have loaded up the lemons, or at least that's what I should have, which is a light tactile, though it's a little bit, it's nice and, and um, <clears throat> pronounced bottom out long stem and the tactility is just slightly above a brown and finally we have a really nice rubberized USB-C USB-A cable um, and it definitely carries Newfie's language the uh, the mint and the gray colors um, and it's it's nice and thick feels nice and comfortable I think that's one of the one of the better ones that'll probably last and it does have nice um, collars here at the connection so that you're not, you know, killing that cable too soon from, uh, from bending. And here we are with the Halo 75 V2 from Doofy. Now, it does come with a dust cover, and I'm very appreciative. I think these are extremely important to help keep keyboards clean. Um, even, even after a week in an office environment, take off some of your keycaps. <laughs> you'll find the keyboard's a lot dirtier than you would expect it to be. So this helps to keep it cleaner, which will mean that it'll last longer. Here we have the lovely Halo 75 V2. Now, it definitely does share a, a similar language. And wait a minute, what's this? So I guess you got a little cover here with the Newfie logo. And we can stick our receiver, but it seems to... Uh, well, it stays in there, but it's sticking out a bit. So I guess if we don't want to lose it, we can put this away. And then we have a nice little cover for it. Um, all right. That's uh, kind of interesting. As on the previous model, we have the Windows and the Mac switch. Though there are no labels for them. This should be the mode switch. This should turn us on. Put us into Bluetooth. Yeah. But... um. This doesn't say, nor, nor does this say which mode is what. I'm kind of wondering why they did that. But uh, to follow along in the design language of the 75, uh, the first one, we do have an aluminum top with what looks like a polycarbonate, or it could be an ABS bottom. And then we have uh, foam on the inside, or silicone most likely, that matches the color of the case. And we do have some light bleed that comes through, um, just like the 75, the original. It allows it to shine through the sides, so it does give it a pretty cool effect, um, obviously with the blue hue. Now we also have, like we did on the Gem 80, um, we have the homing keys that have little LED windows in there, and then the up arrow also has a little homing bar that also serves as an LED window. But
Well, right off the bat, I have got to say, this sounds so much better than its predecessor did right out of the box. This is just... And it's definitely a much softer typing feel. See what we have in here. That's what I thought. So we have a layer of PET directly above the PCB. And then we have a layer of IXPE above that PET layer. That's why we were getting that nice, poppy, marbly, creamy, um, all those adjectives, that, that very nice stock sound. And we have a PC plate, and you can definitely see that it is gasket mount because it does, it's not a trampoline, but it's definitely nice, soft, and bouncy. So as for the switch, uh, like I said, these are um, a uh, collaboration between Gatoron and Newfie, and it does seem to have a nice little, uh, I guess you could say, a, uh, it's kind of like a light diffuser in, in the switch right there, so it does help for the light to shine through, although it kind of looks dull over here, whereas it looks much brighter over here. Good tolerances, but loose enough that you're not going to be fighting to take the switches in and out of the plate. All right, so we do have a ghost bar for the space bar. For those of you who may not know, Nufi, um, I think they invented it. I mean, they just, they added to the space bar. Uh, they have this extra piece that's added here that has these uh, basically like sound diffusers. They have these thick pieces of what feels like a vinyl resin. Um, that help to absorb the sound. They also do put the uh, silicone here in the space bar, which they say designed by Newfie. But that allows the space bar to just sound lovely. Um, now we do have, it's the same profile as on the gem. These are the uh, MSA. So they're in the SA profile family. Uh, they're just a little bit lower. They're not quite as tall. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of the standard stabilizers here. They are plate mount and, well, they're definitely uh, lubricated there. We have quite an extra goo amount of lubrication. Over lubrication can uh, make your stabilizer sluggish over time. So I always suggest uh, cleaning them off. Even if they sound, sound and feel fine at first, uh, over time that's going to start gumming up because all that extra lubrication is going to start collecting those little tiny amounts of dust. So that's why you got to find the balance because that'll eventually become almost like a mud and it will start to make your stabilizers sluggish or maybe work better on one side than the other. So I always do recommend cleaning those off um, and just, you know, either cleaning them off to where there's enough lube on them that they still uh, glide nicely or completely cleaning them off and re-lubing them because we definitely have a lot of lubrication on there. So these are probably gonna get cleaned off uh, not before I do the stock sound test though, uh, but before I start using it. Because most of the keyboards I review, I do use. Even if it's only for a day or two, I still use the keyboard so that I can get a feel. Because I mean, yes, you know, you can kind of get an idea when you're reviewing it. First open it and everything, but until you actually use it and, you know, and, and apply it to your own use cases, then I don't know. I, I just feel that there's you got to get a you know you, you got to get an understanding for it so you can see that we have grease all over the plate and there's grease all over down here now it does not appear that we have the ability for screw and stabilizers which honestly at this price i kind of would expect there to be the the ability to add screw and stabilizers now don't get me wrong these are quite nice um, they are well attached and they have, I mean, literally no wobble whatsoever. So it's almost as if they're a plate, part of the plate as well. But 
some people just prefer screw and stabilizers. So having that option, giving that option to people, I think is a good thing. Now this this uh, lemon switch, it's all right, but it's I prefer a nice heavy tactile, heavy as in a very pronounced tactile bump, and heavy also as in the spring weight. The spring weight on this is I'm going to say 40 grams, 42 at the most. So. But it sounds pretty good, so I'm curious what it's going to sound like when I come back to it. And I'll probably uh, try out some Gazoo U4Ts or... Oh, there's a couple of other um, tactiles that I've been having fun with lately, like the uh, Gatoron uh, EF Grayish. I don't know why I want to call it something else always, but the, the EF line. I still haven't tried the Curry, but that's a, a linear, but the EF Grayish tactile... It's, I've been putting in a lot of boards and it really has that nice deeper tone if you're looking for that thocky, creamy thock. Or, I don't know. It, there's so many adjectives and everyone has a little bit different of an idea because they're not necessarily tied down to something. So to me, thocky is the closest one. That, to me, that means deep and pleasant. So as with the first one, we still have the halo. So that's that interior light basically diffusing. It basically side lights all along the edge of the PCB that diffuse through, um, a, I don't know if it's a plastic or if it's a vinyl layer there, but it, that's what gives Halo its name. Now, at, like I said, as with the other one, we have this detachable, what, you could see the magnet right there, but we have a detachable badge um, that, I mean, I, I don't hate, but I just, I guess I don't get. Now, if they had different, like, charms that I could replace this with, then I might understand it. You know, something that I could personalize it with. But, as of right now, I mean, I guess you could 3D print something and put a piece of, um, metal in it so that it, it'll still stick. But, I don't know. That's, that's just, that's just me. So they do share a lot of similarities uh, between the Halo V1 and the Halo V2. I mean, obviously you got QMK with this one, but as far as the construction goes, I mean, yes, the other one is top mount. This one's a gasket mount, but the, the body, except for that badge there, is very, very similar. Though I did prefer the fact that in the Halo um, first edition, this came already inside and it did not stick out. Um, I would prefer if it was flush in there, just like it is. So yeah, with the, uh, the V1, it definitely, well, it's not quite flush, but it's almost flush. It's maybe two millimeters sticking out above the case, but kind of almost blends in with the ridges and it doesn't really snag on anything. At least I haven't had that issue. But with this one, that's sticking out like that. That's um, kind of seems like they forgot about this until the last minute. They're like, can we make any space for it? Just the specs. Today, we are taking a look at the Nufi Halo 75 V2. It is a 3.8 mode QMK 75% that is made from a top case made out of aluminum and a bottom case made out of translucent ABS. It has a gasket mounted palm plate with plate mounted stabilizers and three and five pin compatible south facing hot swap PCB with both the IXPE and PET layers or HiFi. It has 1000 Hertz pulling over both wired and 2.4 gigahertz connections. And it has an improved halo light as where it shines through the bottom of the case, as well as the inner perimeter. It is also QMK and Signal RGB compatible. This keyboard comes weighing in at 1,028 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 23 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 33 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of seven degrees. Raising the first set of fold-out feet We'll take the back up to 40 millimeters, changing your angle of typing to 11 degrees. And flipping down the final set of fold-out feet, we'll bring the back up to 47 millimeters of height 
and change your angle of typing to 14 degrees. It is preloaded with a 4000 milliamp hour battery. The MSRP for this keyboard is $129.95 on Newfie.com and can, you can receive a 10% discount using the code METTECH. Links below. All right, so about QMK and VIA. First, to get VIA working, if it was a perfect world, we would open up VIA, we would authorize the device, and it would load up. Um, now, why Nufi does not host their own version of VIA, um, the VIA website and everything is on GitHub. Um, they did recently change it. That's why I haven't updated the one that I run. Um, but unfortunately, I've come to find that a lot of these fake VIA are using the same PID and VID. So that limits me as to, you know, I have to basically choose which via file to put up there on some keyboard models because Nufi is not adhering to the way that via and QMK want you to use their software. I doubt that we're ever going to see that functionality. We have to first go to the Nufi website, um, go all the way down to the footer. So just hit the end key. And then from there, you have to click on consoles. We're not looking for console, but you have to click on console and you'll see that software for console for, you know, the top list of the models. And it, they've just recently added Halo 75 V2. So you click on there, then you click on the VIA configurator, which takes you yet to another page, which there tells you to download the JSON file. And then there you can get to the link where you will download the JSON file for the Halo V2. At that point, you want to go back to VIA, um, go to the Settings tab and enable the de Design tab. It's going to give you a warning. Don't worry about it. Um, then go ahead and load up the extracted file from the zip that you downloaded from Nufi. Then you can go back to the primary screen. Um, I always recommend refreshing and then repairing or reauthorizing the device and at that point everything should load up and you should have the ability to go ahead and start mapping keys um, one of the things that for some reason they don't make it a point to communicate the first layer you're going to see layer zero is your mac layer um, zero and then one is its function layer Layer two is going to be your first layer if you are in Windows mode. So that's one thing that I see a lot of people always like, wait a minute, I mapped it, you know, I'm in Windows mode, but I mapped it on layer one, which is the second layer for the Mac mode, and it doesn't work. So if you want to map something on your under function layer, you know, it's going to be layer one for Mac and layer three for Windows. So then I decided to go ahead and look for the QMK source. It appears that even on Nufi's own GitHub, they have yet to release the QMK source. When I first got the Gem 80 uh, for review, it was also the, the, the source control had yet not been published. Now the Gem 80 had an immediate out of the box problem. It was fixed in QMK source, but it was a debounce issue um, to where basically every second or third key you hit would double or triple type. Um, it's, it's like I said, it's since been corrected. I actually published my own branch of the firmware um, because theirs, even though it got rid of it, most of it, there was still a little bit of issue. And actually I was having sometimes key misses where I know I, sh I, I the, the key actuated but nothing showed up. So the change that I made, it has worked fine for me whenever I use it. As of yet though, I have not used it in an extended, at an extended period. Um, I have not seen any issues with debounce. So perhaps they got that, perhaps they got that corrected right off the bat. But uh, they list this keyboard as QMK. And if they're going to do that, if they're not going to be, you know, publishing in the official QMK Git 
hub repo because I understand, you know, like I said, there's technical issues. If they're going to promote this as a QMK keyboard, then they have to have the QMK source available the day of release or beforehand when this gets in the hand of reviewers or early prototypes or whatever QMK source needs to be available if only in their GitHub repo. QMK needs to be available because otherwise this isn't a QMK keyboard. It's a VIA keyboard because all I can do is VIA. You know, uh, I can't go into QMK and if I want to do more advanced things with my keyboard, which is one of the reasons people like QMK as well as the fact that it works on all operating systems, not just Windows, not just Mac. So that is one of my sticking points. Otherwise, I mean, hardware wise, these are great units. I have not had a single issue with any of my previous Halo keyboards and even my ear, which I, like I said, I don't use all that often. It's not, it's not my favorite low profile, but then again, I'm, I'm just not the biggest fan of low profiles in general. So it's, it's probably more of a me thing than a them thing. When it comes to the Halo series, hardware wise, I absolutely love them. I love the design language. I love the inner Halo. i come to accept that yes i am a bit of an rgb geek i don't have it all over my computers but when my keyboard has it i like it so yeah the rgb has definitely been updated and um as of today the qmk source is available i'll put a link down below in the um description i just was kind of waiting for that to be out they said it'd be out on the 12th it's out on the 12th um there's definitely some improvements over the original one though there's a couple things that i just don't know why they did different why they didn't include the legends for the power switches here as they did in the original one is i don't know it's something that i question but i have been using the keyboard now for a few days over wired and wireless and besides a key skip here and there i mean not like every five keys press no like every page worth of typing. So something that really could be just my mistake. Um, but if it is the keyboard, it's extremely rare, but I have the QMK source now, so I'm gonna go take a look at it, probably do some of my own tweaks to it, uh, like I did for the Gem 80 and, and publish a fork. And if I do, I'll make a post in case anyone's interested. But Overall, that yeah, that's another thing uh, with this one. It's definitely lighter. I mean, don't get me wrong, it still feels substantial. Um, but if you've held this one, it feels lighter than this one. Um, not significantly so, not like half as light, but you will definitely notice that the new Halo V2 is going to feel lighter. And I think it's because of the, the perhaps the difference in the aluminum. Because this aluminum seems a little bit, I mean, it definitely have different finishes on it. But this could be heavier. It also could be the pad, but it also could be due to the uh, construction of it. I have been, like I said, using the Gem 80, the TKL. It has become one of my favorites. It comes into rotation a lot. Um, I've quite enjoyed it. This one, I love the colors of it. I have been using it, but I do want to put in some heavier tactiles in here and probably a different set of keycaps. I'm probably going to go with either Dash or and or a mix with Dancer um, MT3 because this to me, I don't know, it was with the first one as well, even though it's, it's a newer design and it's more modern, it gives me a retro feel as well. So putting MT3 caps on a Halo Again, I'll put the uh, link to the QMK tree because they got the, they have their own uh, GitHub where they publish the source code for QMK. I'll provide a link down below. Um, there's also a, a discount code where you can get 10% off if you do decide to buy this as well uh, using MechTech as the coupon. And um, but if you guys got any questions, Anything that you'd like for you know to see me do it when I come back to it because I definitely will be coming back to it. I know I only came back in, in some shorts for the other Halo series, but 
it's been it's been a nutty time. A lot of keyboards have been coming out, and I still got a few keyboards to to uh, review. But this one is definitely one that I want to go in there and really see how it's built. Um, like I said, it has that more of a, a hi-fi profile kind of sound to it. So it does, even though, the, don't get me wrong, the original Halo sounded great out of the box and I haven't modded them and I've still enjoyed using them. These, the, the new one definitely sounds better. Uh, it's right along the lines at, 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 with the gem. And they got the PET layer, the IXPE, and it's foamed in such a way and constructed in such a way that it provides for, I know, a lot of people have been calling it creamy, creamy, marbly, you know, different adjectives like that. But when they use the hi-fi as the uh, descriptor, I think that's more of an appropriate uh, way to call it because it is a fuller sound. I mean, it is pleasant because it is fuller, because it has some higher tones, it has some low tones, it has, it has a mix of different tones. Um, obviously, the switch can affect that, but regardless almost of what switch you use. I mean, long stem are definitely going to amplify the sound, but almost any switch you use in a hi-fi setup is going to sound is going to sound at least pretty broad in range, in my opinion. So that hi-fi, I think, is a much better term to use for keyboards that have, you know, this out of the box of sound. Because it is, it is quite pleasant. I, I agree with that. And it definitely is the combination of the PET above the PCB with the IXP above that and then foam between the plate and the PCB and a good PCB, um, such as a PC plate or a palm plate. Um, so it, I think that we should probably stick to hi-fi because I think hi-fi everyone kind of gets, especially if they've, you know, the first time they bought a Leo Vog High 75, what? Um, certain, I know certain switches are called high five. That just really means that they're long pull. But when it comes to the keyboard, the high five layers that I've seen on some of the listings, I think that applies well to the sound profile that these keyboards with this particular construction and setup sound like. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? I do hope that you enjoyed the video. A like, a subscribe really does go a long way. I'm going to leave you guys now with a stock sound test of the Halo 75 V2 from Newfie. I do hope that you have a wonderful day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keep it on.